Dog Dragons. I never film during the week, but I just want to relax this weekend and read. We are getting ready to go into peace talks and I want to read all weekend. So I am here to do a combination of the spring, like, you know, a spring book tag, which I saw on Danny Dabble's channel and also a little bit of a spring TBR. I'll be honest, I'm so bad at following my spring TBR videos. So I'm going to make this super easy and I'm going to pick five physical books of my TBR and five ERCs that I want to read and just make it easy and quick and dirty. Um, so that is the plan. And yeah, so let's get into it. And I am going to talk about the book, the, the, uh, questions that I saw and anything that I else can think of, but we're going to focus on the questions and then we're going to go into the TBR that I have. I'm going to choose 10 books and we're going to chat through them. So the first book is, what is a book you've been avoiding starting? That is so easy because it's the book I'm in the middle of and that is Iron Flame. So let me go get it. The reason I have not been thrilled to start this is just because I have not heard the best things about it. And I'm very, I'm not susceptible to like liking a book if other people don't like it, but I am susceptible to falling prey to not want to read a book that people don't like. But I normally have like very, very different opinions. I'm enjoying it. It's just not hitting the same and I don't know if it's because of my mental state or just like it's just very very slow moving and the book is very different from book one but I'm not as sucked in as I was with fourth wing so I'm struggling a little bit for that element of it so I am struggling to pick that up just because it is so massive so yeah that is a book that I'm avoiding starting but I have started it so that is at least a step in the right direction but I have avoided it since November so Let's be honest about that. Um, and then the next question is, how are your shelves organized? Oh my God, it, it is really complicated. I'm gonna show you how they're organized in a second, but um, I really have books everywhere and my system doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me, to be very, very honest. Um, but I will show you like what they look like. And normally it's by genre or like, how I've received them. So like, let me show you what I mean. So this shelf over here, let me see if I can show you, is all of my books I got recently. So they're like my newly purchased books and they're just books that I have got most recently. This is my fantasy shelf. This is my contemporary shelf that I have a lot of books that just don't get a ton of bread. This is my upper, um, you know, fantasy reads that I want to read. And that is my keep shelf. And then again, this is my overall fantasy TBR. Um, this is my, one of my, I have a list every year that I do. And this is one of my lifts shelves for the, like the list I, I have chosen. And this is another one for the books on my list. And this one hidden behind the sweatshirt <laughs> is also another list book. And this is the continuation of my fantasy TBR. So this stuff is a lot of fantasy focused. I'll be very, very honest. This is my recently purchased book before 2024. So these are like my 2023 purchases. This is my clothes cart, honestly, but it's also my seasonal TBR cart that I'm still working my way through. That is my keep shelf and also just some other random books. Um, Again, there is no rhyme or reason. <laughs> there really is not. And then this is another one of my like um, sequel shelves. I have another thriller shelf. I have another fantasy shelf. I have a keep shelf. And then this is like my hodgepodge shelf. So yeah, they there is like a rhyme and reason to them. Honestly, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to anyone but me, <laughs> which is a bit complicated for me, but that's kind of where we are at. Um, so yeah. That's how they're organized. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense, no, but it makes sense to me, so I'm content. Um, and then the next one is open your window, light and refreshing read. What is a book that you would consider to be a light and refreshing read that you have read or you just think is a light, refreshing read? I am going to tell you guys my favorite contemporary, YA contemporary romance of all time, and that is Tweet Cute by Emma Lord. I will attach a photo here. book by this author and I have thoroughly enjoyed it like really really enjoyed it and it's basically like a 
you got male retelling set in New York City. There are these two characters. They are accidentally messaging each other. And they're also big rivals. Well, their, their family's businesses are big rivals in New York City. And it is a hate to more romance. And I love this book. Like, it is a book I can read over and over and over again because I love the characters. It was so quick. It was so fun. I read it during the pandemic when I was home and I remember loving it because I was, I, I work in the city so it just gave me New York vibes and I missed it. So if you're walking for a light refreshing read and you haven't picked up Tweet Cute by Emma Lord, I would pick it up because it's just really, really worked for me. Um, Cleaning out your cupboard. What is your favorite food related book? I think I'm just going to give you the easy answer and I'm just going to say Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry because I love that book so, 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 so much. I will attach a photo here. Book that just worked for me. Like I had such a fun time with it and I really enjoyed it. I think that it was the perfect like element of cozy fantasy. But there was some tension to it, like light tension. I, th I honestly think bookshops and bone dance had a more clear plot to it. So if you're looking, if you like, shush. Um, she hears something barking in the back and she's barking at it. Um, but if you wanted, like if you liked um, books, um, if you liked Legends and Lattes and wanted something that had a bit more like depth to it, I would honestly pick up Bookshop and Donuts because Bookshops and Bone Dust because that book worked for me a lot more. I mean, it had a lot more tension and a lot more plot to the story, which I actually did really, really like. Um, so yeah, but a food related read that I really, really loved is obviously Legends and Lattes, but also like the Hannah Swanson series, I don't think is the best written, but it does have elements and I'll try to attach a photo of that series here as well. So the next question is what is the fifth book on your shelf? So there's a lot of shelves in this room, so I don't know which shelf they want me to use. So I'm just gonna choose the like the shelves closest to me and I'm gonna show you guys what that book is. So this is actually a perfect early spring read and it is Playing for Keeps by Jennifer Dugan. And this is from the YA, Some Girls Do. This is a sapphic romance staring a baseball pitcher and a student empire who are definitely not supposed to fall for each other. And it comes out in April. And I have read all of her books and really, really enjoyed them. I read Some Girls Do. She has like a lot, a wide range in her backlist. And this one is the newest one. My friend actually picked it up for me when she went to ALA. Um, and yeah, I'm really happy to have a copy. Hopefully I get to read it soon. It actually is rather short. It's a little bit over 300 pages. So that is something to continue or to consider for the early fall uh, or the early spring. Sorry, my brain is in a different millennium. Um, but yeah, so yeah, question six is a scene you want to rewrite. Hmm, that's an interesting question. Um... Huh, that's actually a very good question. I don't know of any books that I would rewrite a scene. Actually, yeah, maybe there there are a couple of romances that I feel like we didn't get like a really like clear ending. Like I felt like we just didn't get that. So I'm trying to think of one I read recently that like I miss that. I'm trying to like think of one that like let me try to see if I can look on Goodreads and see. Cause really like Goodreads is like when I when I when I read romances, there are some romances that just kind of like end so unexpectedly that like you don't really see how they surpassed it. Like you got to see all the hard stuff, but you didn't really get to see any of the stuff that led them to there. Um I think Dreams and Destiny by Sanaya Mignon. I will try to attach a photo here. Didn't really have a clear ending. I felt like I needed there to be a scene at the ending that sort of expanded the world and kind of flushed out that magic system a little bit because it didn't really make sense a whole lot to me. And I felt like I was missing that when I was reading it. So I feel like for that, I feel like I wanted you, I, I wanted another scene, like something to really clarify that world building in that. 
So yeah, that is where I think we're going to go. And that I just read recently. I read that this month. So another quickie, but something that I would like the world to be flushed out a little bit more. Um, um, question seven is a, an unexpected series. Hmm. Something that like, I don't think had to be a series. Huh. another one that's like really hard I am definitely a series girl I, do, I struggle sometimes to read them um I'm trying to think of like honestly like the same series like the um of destinies and um of destinies and what is it called of destinies and um uh, I'm like I like, can't think of anything. Um, but yeah, that's that's another series that I think kind of went on too long. Of Dreams and Destiny by Sanaya Mignon. I'm just going to attach a photo here for both of those. Oh, book one was a solid standalone and didn't really need any more companion stories. Like, I don't know. Sometimes with companion books, like, I don't really feel that connected to the side character. So I don't really want to read. But this series, I think, could have been solid just as, like, a first book. And I don't think the other two really needed to happen because I don't think those stories were as strong. I think book one was stronger, but not book two and three. So that is why we are with that. Um, and then the next question is a book that tries too hard to relay a message. Huh. You know, that's like, oh my god, these questions are so hard. Book that hards to, like, tries too hard to relay a message. Um, hmm. Like, literally looking at my thing to see if, like, anything clicks to me. <sighs> Nothing I read this year really, like, Netflix. Nothing was super over the top either. I don't know if I have an answer to this, to be very, very honest. So I might have to pass on this question. There was no book that like tries very hard to like prove a point. I don't think. Um, yeah, I don't really have one, unfortunately, for that. Um, but the last book is a book with like a clean finish that I read recently. Um... I'd probably say Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. I'll touch a photo here. It's like pretty clean like all the way through and I liked it. It didn't have a lot of like external conflict. With, I mean it had a lot of external conflict like outside things but nothing that really affected the romance that dramatically. Um, so yeah that's kind of where I am with that. Um, so yeah. That is where we are going to leave this part of the video. Those questions were hard, I'll be honest. I, I think I should have prepped a little bit more, but I wanted to film this today. So now I'm going to show you the five e-arcs on my TBR and also the five physical books on my TBR that I hope to tackle this spring. I'm going to be kind to myself and maybe cheat a little bit and put some books on here that I'm already planning to read. But yeah, let's get into the TBR and the five e-arcs that I hope to tackle. Hey, so I just pulled a couple of books on my shelf. I don't even know like how many books this is, but I do want to go through them. Most of these are somewhat recently bought, so I thought that I would just toss them onto this TBR, and then I'm going to write them in my planner. Um, so yeah, that is my plan. One book that's on my my mini TBR is ASAP by Axie O. I tend to leave a lot of romances in this time of year because they're quick, they're easy, and especially with my show upcoming, I want to make that a little bit of a priority so this is the sequel to xoxo and i know that alexa from alexa Love books read it and really really enjoyed it so this is high on my tbr i also want to read a fate inked in blood by danielle l jensen this is the fairy loot edition and i want to read it it would be perfect for realmathon but i don't know if i'm going to get around to it quite so quick but i do want to read it this is such a pretty edition so um, and then I also want to read Greenwild by Pari Thomas, which is a middle grade that I would love to get to because it is really, really springy. And I don't know how long it is, but it might be a little bit too long for peace talks. 
but it is a middle grade read that I have high on my TBR. I think it has Secret Garden vibes. There was also an animal on the cover, which means I could read it for Ramadan. Also, another book that I'm really excited for is Lord of the Wilds by Angela Sabra. And this is a book that a stunning romanticy debut about an enchanted library, two handsome fae, and one human who bring them all together. Again, I'm not going to talk too much about like summaries, but this is another one that is high on my TBR. Um, and then I have a couple of backlist titles for me. Oh, I'll do the one that's coming out. Playing for Keeps by Jennifer Dugan is one that I mentioned earlier in this video that I do really, really want to read. It's a romance, and I want to read some more YA contemporary this year because I do tend to really, really enjoy them. Um, and then here is just some backlist titles that I do want to get to. One is This is This Time It's Real by Anna Liang. This is set in a school, and I think she winds up in a writing class, and she winds up using someone else's experience to kind of pad her essay, I think. I don't know too much about this, but I want to read it. Um, I also want to read The Self Same Metal by Brittany Ann Williams, which I really want to read. It has a theater element to it and also has Faye. I've had this for so, so long. I got this the first year I went to a um, Yalpa, so it's been a bit, but it's also relatively short, so it may be a quicker read that I read when I'm doing my show. Um, I also want to read Damsel by Evelyn Skye. I just watched this movie and I want to read what the real book was. And the last book I'm going to talk about is Thief, Lady Liar by D.L. Saria. And this is kind of a fairy tale retelling that I want to get to. So yeah, let me know in the comments what are some books on your spring TBR. I would love to know and I'll talk to you guys soon.